Ty 2, Bush Rescue, the sequel to the painfully mediocre platformer game Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. It came out in 2004, two years after its predecessor. This is the one I actually owned as a kid and have the most fond memories of. After replaying the last game in the series, I kind of realized it's really not as great as I remember. But will the sequel suffer the same fate? Let's find out. The game's CG intro recaps all of the events of Tai 1, narrated by some guy who's trying way too hard of a badass voice. But one brave soul stood up to Cass. You might notice on the title screen that they've added a kart racing mode. It's really nothing special, and it is much more than a cruddy Mario Kart knockoff, not even worth mentioning. The game starts off pretty promising. Ty, Shazza, Ranger Ken, and Sly are all headed towards the prison to stop Boss Cass's henchmen from breaking him out. There's so much detail in this sequence, you can tell they put a lot of effort into it, and it's actually a lot of fun because of that. Soon enough, you'll find yourself piloting one of the game's new features, the Battle Bunyip. It's a mech suit that allowed Ty to take out enemies much easier and eliminate certain obstacles. There's also many other types of bunyips in the game, but I'll get into those much later. You'll then run into Cass's henchman, Fluffy. Did I even mention Fluffy in the last video? She shows up for literally 10 seconds in the first game. They probably just shoved her in the last game to use as a plot device in this one. When confronted by her, Ty says probably the most badass thing you will ever hear. I'm not gonna let you break this for a Oh yeah! You and who's army? I don't need an army! The writing in this game reeks of cheese, but I love it so much. Ty fails to stop Fluffy and Cass escapes from prison. They both take off and are soon nowhere to be seen. Ty and friends then decide to make an organized team called Bush Rescue. With Bush Rescue, we're ready to take on Boss Cass the next time he strikes. However, before they can go after Cass again, they find out that he's founded his own country that has its own laws. So they can't go and arrest him. Yes, that's actually what happens. I'm not making this up. Cass has set up his own country just so he can have diplomatic immunity. That is the dumbest, most ridiculous reason I've ever heard as to why they can't just go get the villain right away. I like it. I like it a lot. You mean it's an immunity community? I find that line stupidly hilarious. They can double pack, open other people's mail, and leave the milk out. And Sergeant Bluey can't touch him. Sergeant Bluey! The officer's name is Sergeant Bluey! Ty controls a little better this time around. Movement feels more natural, but jumping feels a tad stiff at times. Sometimes I have a really hard time getting onto a ladder, but overall it's not that bad. They also added the option not to use an inverted camera. Thank God. Aside from the slight tweak in movement feel, Ty controls no different than the first game. His main attack is still throwing one or two boomerangs, and he's still sporting that bite attack. Ty can also now grind on rails. It's a nice little thing they added, but you'll rarely get to use it throughout the game. It's not much of a shame though, since it wasn't implemented super well. Like the homing attack, Sonic pulls it off much better. Bush Rescue HQ serves as the hub world this time around. It's much better than the hub world in the first game. It's just as big, but not nearly as empty. There's plenty to do and find if you look around, and many spots where you can test out your new boomerangs as you get them. Next to the HQ is the town of Buramudgee, which serves as kind of a second mini hub world. There's tons of people to talk to, shops, missions to do, and things of the like. Remember how the last game teased us with Robotai? Yeah, he's not the villain of the game. In fact, he's not even a villain of the game. Instead, he just walks around Buramudgee as another useless NPC. That's it. That would be just like if at the end of Iron Man 2 when they teased Thor, they just never made a Thor movie. I assume they originally planned to have him as the villain, but they must have scrapped it. They then just stuck him here instead, I guess. But that's actually quite a big piss off. You spend hours in the game achieving 100% completion just to be treated to a meaningless teaser. Great job, Chrome. Once you're able to leave Buramudgee, you'll soon discover that this game is structured much differently than the first Thai game. Instead of having a set of levels, each with thunder eggs to collect, you're treated to an open world of missions to do all over. The objective is no longer to collect thunder eggs, but instead to do various missions for people. As for collectibles, there's still cogs and buildies to collect, but they don't do anything. The only purpose in collecting them all is for 100% completion. Otherwise, it's completely pointless. You can also get these things, which you can use as currency to buy maps 
months to find the buildings and cogs. So again, they're completely pointless to get unless you want 100% completion. You can also find a guy named Gubu Steve, who will give you a lot of opals if you find him. After completing a certain amount of missions, you'll unlock a story mission that'll have a boss fight and will advance the plot. This formula works pretty well for Ty. Like the Mario games, the game still doesn't require you to do every mission in order to advance. This way, if there's a mission you really don't like, you can just skip it and still be able to complete the game. To get to each mission, you'll drive around the open world in Shaz's truck. There are many stops that all contain mini levels where missions are located. Driving is okay. It can be fun when you're going downhill and you can gather a lot of speed, but there's many parts that have muddy roads that slow you right down, making it take forever to get to your destination. I think they could have increased the truck's speed to make traveling a little less tedious, and they really could have done without these muddy roads. Some of the missions will require you to have certain boomerangs, which you can now get in whichever order you like. From the very beginning, every boomerang is available from the store for purchase. It's just a matter of earning enough opals in order to purchase them. Speaking of which, there's no longer 300 opals in each stage. Instead, opals are used as a currency. That means no more frustrating where the hell are the opals missions to complete. Each boomerang can be upgraded by visiting Sly Shack and paying a hefty amount of opals. The upgraded boomerangs usually just make them stronger and more versatile, like the Lava Rang and the Freezer Rang, but some of them get hella upgrades. Like the Omega Rang, which you can throw in huge barrages that will home in on anything nearby. These things pretty much break the game, so I try not to use them. A boomerang I forgot to mention in the last video that's also present in this game is the Kaboomerang. Like the name suggests, it's a boomerang that explodes. Awesome. You now switch boomerangs by bringing up a quick select menu with the triangle button, which flows much better than it did in the first game, which required you to tediously cycle through them all with the D-pad. The boomerangs all feel unique and helpful in this game, and are overall designed much better. Except the zappy rang, which you will still never use once in the entire game. One of the coolest new boomerangs they've added is the lasherang, which acts as grappling hooks. Along with boomerangs, you also have to purchase licenses for different bunyips. This is kind of stupid. Essentially, if you arrive at a mission where you have to pilot a specific bunyip, you can't get inside the thing unless you go all the way back and purchase a license for it. Because of this, it's best to get all of these as soon as possible. Like I mentioned before, there are multiple types of bunyips. The one you'll find yourself using the most is the thermo bunyip, which can douse fires with its water cannons and can swim through lava. There's also the lifter bunyip, which moves way too slow when you'll use for like two missions, and the sub bunyip, which controls identically to the helicopter in the helicopter missions. The helicopter missions suck, and there's way too many of them. They're all tedious and boring, and it's a lazy way to try and add variety to the gameplay. I never understood why developers feel the need to change genres completely just to add variety. Just look at the Mario Galaxy games, you'll find yourself balancing on balls and surfing in that game, but no matter what you're doing, the name of the game is still the same. You're always navigating an obstacle course. Making the player do something that they normally wouldn't do in means of normal gameplay is not good game design. Why can't more games be like that? Have variety within the context of the same genre, like I don't see how it's that hard. During some of the helicopter missions, a laughably stupid cover of Ride of the Valkyries plays with didgeridoos in the background. This is just a single example of many of the hilariously stupid songs in this game. Like Tai One, the more chill tracks are pretty good. but there's way more stupid tracks this time around. However, it's never ear grating bad, but instead funny bad, so you'll never find yourself being annoyed by the soundtrack. You did the best you could, Possum. Boss fights in this game aren't half bad. They're still nothing special, but definitely a step up from the previous game. After beating all of the boss missions, you'll unlock the final mission, where you'll storm Cassopolis. Wow, yours is really cool. What is it? It's a missile bunyip. I built it myself. I like that they actually turned Sly into a character instead of a stupid anti-hero. The voice actor does a much better job this time around. Speaking of which, the presentation overall is much better this time. The models all look a lot better, and the animation is much smoother. During the final mission, you'll get to pilot the ultimate bunyip. The Shadow Bunyip. Is that a... Shadow Bunyip? Sounds like you've got bunyip envy, Sly. 
Don't worry, I like yours too. Poor Sly. He shows up with his badass bunyip that he spent so much of his time making. And then Ty just walks in with something even better. The final level isn't nearly as underwhelming this time around. In fact, it's not a half bad conclusion. The final boss is decent too, a huge improvement over the previous game. Ty and friends then stop Cass, who gets sent back to prison. Back at Bush Rescue, Sly, Shazza, and Ty are all awarded medals for their heroic deeds, and Bush Rescue goes on to continue keeping the citizens of Australia safe. It's also teased at the end that Cass's newest sidekick, Julius, gets away. I guess we know who's gonna be the villain of the sequel, unless they pull a Metal Sonic tie again. So in the end is Ty 2, a good game. It's definitely not a bad game, I think it's pretty good. It's by no means a great game, but... It's a pretty good game. I definitely recommend it to anyone that really likes platformer games like Rayman, Mario, Banjo. Though you'll have to play it with the mindset that it's nowhere near as good as those games. But if you're able to suffer through all the painfully mediocre shit they put in there, it's a pretty good experience. It has enough original ideas to keep it fun and interesting, and it pretty much solves almost all the problems that the previous game had with it, being structured so differently and all. So Tai 1 was painfully mediocre, but Tai 2 was pretty good, so... What will Tie 3 have in store for us? Find out next time on the next episode of Drag Ballsy. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Night Your Rat all the way through and sticking around to the end. If you missed the last video I made on the first Tie the Tasmanian Tiger game, you can watch that one by clicking the video on the left. A while back, I also made another video on another game called Yume Niki, and if you want to watch that one, you can click the link on the right. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you can click the like button, and if you're not subscribed yet and you want to see more content in the future, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button and subscribe to me, because that's what, that's, that's what that button does. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you in the future. And as always, take care. What's the boom and boomerang? Wow.